Hello, this is Matt. Kose. Mark. Guillaume. James. Mel. Zach. This is David. Terrier. This is PSG Talking. Le seul podcast sur le PSG en anglais. Hello and welcome to another episode of PSG Talking. Today is Monday, October 26th, and I'm your host, Ed. And joining me on today's show are some of the most knowledgeable PSG supporters out there, and I'm thrilled to have them on the show today. Let's go around and say hello before we dive into the show's topics. We'll start with Guillaume out there in California. How's everything going for you, Guillaume? Doing fine. Testing my... <laughs> my That's good. Let's, let's make sure we get our audio issues out of the way first. Uh, Kose, where in the world are you? And... and let us know how you're doing, wherever you are. Yeah, um, no, yeah, that is always the question. Um, <laughs> I am currently reporting live from Missouri, so happy to be here, happy to um, get a chance to come back not too too much longer after the last time I was here. So, And believe me, I have a few things on my mind for today, so, you know, just happy to be here. Oh, I like the tease. And James, how's everything going down there in cold Dallas? Yeah, uh, it's going fine. It's not supposed to be this cold, especially for um, late October. It's supposed to be a little more fall, maybe in the 60s, but you know we're down at 40 degrees freedom units. Freedom units. And uh, before we dive into PSG, congrats on Alabama winning against Tennessee for the 27th time. Uh, <laughs> that we'll save that yeah. for the college football podcast but speaking of this no podcast yeah <laughs> Guillaume's like I have no idea so the last time we had a podcast was like I think it was like October 7th and everyone was pretty upbeat I think the title of that show was like we've got you know so much depth Pereira and our midfield is great and we had just defeated Angers 6-1 and things have now changed mm-hmm. quite a bit in the past couple weeks so um you know we, we did have a couple of games and Things were looking up, but where we're going to start this show is against uh, Manchester United, because I think that's what our listeners really wanted to talk about, because that's probably Mm. our most high-profile game that we've had, and we we kind of shit the bet on that one. So PSG lose 2-1. The only goal came courtesy of an own goal. Um, Kose, we can start with you on that one. What are your overall thoughts, having watched that game? What were you feeling afterwards? Um, you said you were going to bring the heat, so this is your opportunity. Because I was, I was pretty fired up uh, after this game. Uh, no, yeah, I, I agree absolutely. And um, I was checking, um, I was checking, you know, during halftime, um, after full time. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I was like, I need to know what people are saying on Twitter because this is absolutely unacceptable. Um, I think that, um, you know, leading up to the game. Um, PSG beat Nîmes for O, um, and you know, I thought it was a good performance that we had, but also they were with the red card most of the game. And then um, I thought it was always more of a uh, an attacking rehearsal more than ever it was an actual um, preparation game. Um, but I still thought that we would definitely get to the game a lot better than we did. I think that there were some key players that did not perform um, indeed in the way that they had to perform. Um, I think that the intensity was not there. The, the physical level was not there. Um, we always seen overrun. Um, I was talking to one of my really good friends after the game. I, I told her, I feel like for almost all the game, um, United were just passing into space. And they were just passing into space, and there it wasn't even like, oh my God, what amazing passing we're seeing. Um, I just feel like the team completely felt slow, sluggish. Um, key key individual performances didn't go the well they needed to go, and um, just because of that, uh, I think we had no business uh, even being in the match towards the end of the game. Um, so I think we completely deserved to lose. Yeah, it's hard to argue with that. You know, our, our back line, Diallo, Kimpembe, not the, the typical um, center-back pairing. You know, Tiago Silva, as we all know, is now in Chelsea. And Florenzi, I thought, performed well. You had Krizawa was in for the injured Wamp or not. But it was a very much a kind of a makeshift back line. And you're right, Manchester United just exploited it. And, you know, this is they're not a team with a bunch of world beaters. I mean, they have some nice players, but, I mean, they really took it to us more than I had expected. And so, um, Guillaume, what, what are your thoughts on that game? I mean, 
did it go about how you how you thought or were you no. really disappointed with some of these <laughs> with with, yes. with the players that were out there the again why is the international break so hard for paris saint germain what why is it so hard for us and not as hard for other top teams would also have you know lots of internationals is this because we have too many uh, south americans it could be a factor i mean the team looked uh, exhausted right away right off the bat uh, right off the bat and they were behind and against a, a manchester that plays um intense counter attack with you know very physical very physical players at, in every line. They run, um, I don't know how many mi miles more than we did, like an absurd, I look at the stats, it was ridiculous. Um, and finally, Mbappe look, looked exhausted. No doubt, how many games he played in like the last two weeks before that game? Uh, yeah, with you the know, French national team. Like, French national team. I mean, up, you know, Neymar looked, ex if they all looked exhausted and then I mean, it's easy for us to say now, but, you know, we're playing Manchester. It's back to business in the Champions League. And we don't have the access we used to have. Thiago Silva, Verratti, mm -hmm. um, you know, Cavani or even Icardi who replaced um, Cavani well in that in that role somehow. Um, so we, we're playing without those landmarks, those habits. And again... Again, Verratti in an important Champions League game, because this was very important, is not here because he's either injured, suspended, or, you know, back from injury again and again and again and again. And there's one player that we, we really missed. Well, the player we missed the most was Thiago Silva. Yeah. Um, it was Marco Verratti. I mean, the, our midfield. And on top of it, Gay played injured. The stats of Gay first half, it's like catastrophic. He was nowhere to be found. And then it's the first, um, first big game for a new six, Danilo. And he looked, uh, you know, he's not, he's, he was useful, but he's, he's, he doesn't have the, he needs a more, more games to understand the, the team plays. He's not incredibly mobile. And then Herrera had a bad game too. When when two out of the three midfielders are having a bad game, the third one is going to have a bad game too, especially in a 4-3-3. And Manchester dominated in every compartment of the game, everything. So I'm going to say it and I'm going to say, ah, it's easy to say. I, I look at the first like seven minutes, I was like, yeah, no. No. Um, so it's very disappointing. You knew right away. I, you know, I was... I was when we uh, when they scored the second goal, mm -hmm. <laughs> which was a goal for us. I was like, okay, I settled for this. But after the like se when um, Pogba came in, oh boy, you knew that was like physically the team was falling apart, and you could smell they would score, and they did. It was um, you know they're not they're not a beautiful team. But they can up their game in the Champions League game and they have top players. And when they fit like this and the way they play, they play like a super uh, OL, like a super Lyon. Don't, don't, don't they remind you a little bit of, of, of OL? Well, and then when McTominay plays like this, I mean, uh, here we are. Um, he, he reminds us of the defensive midfielders of Bayern Munich, doesn't he? Tall, powerful, physical, relentless. Okay with the ball, can can box to box, can can do it all, and he completely destroyed us in midfield. Completely destroyed us. Well, here we are again. So yeah, that was that was disappointing. Very, very. so one of the worst games I've seen in ages. I mean, that was pathetic. Yeah, I would have really... I would have taken the one one. Um, yeah, I thought the penalty was really really soft um, mm. that they gave. Uh, Manchester United, and then Navas saved it, and they're like, "Oh, you came off a, an inch, and yeah, you get to yeah, retake well, yeah. it." And so I think there were some some breaks that didn't go PSG's way, but 
this I mean Manchester United is a nice team, but PSG should dominate this team, and especially when you consider what happened, what was that back in twenty nineteen when we got embarrassed by their like reserve team. You would think that they would come out with some like momentum to come out and like just take this team apart in some effort, but I mean it was just so lethargic and frustrating watching this team. Um, James, what were your thoughts on on the the loss to Manchester United? Yeah, I, I think um, I've got a little bit of a different perspective only because like this, this was actually the first game that I watched since the final uh, that I was actually able to sit down and watch. So when I saw the lineup and I was like, oh, uh, we got everybody hurt again or sick or we're like, yeah, it was like, oh, yeah, here we are. We just came off the, the final and now we look right back to where we were two years ago. But as the game started um i didn't feel that it was a big game to psg at all it didn't seem like they were up for it i was watching it and i was i was actually kind of shocked at the end of the game when i was like oh wait this one actually counted for something this is uh this is supposed to be a ucl game and and nobody is nobody seems like they're playing for any kind of points or anything um and to everybody else's point like at the end they all looked gassed they looked um tired slash out of shape um they're at the end there they danilo was so tired that his effort had fallen off of a cliff i mean we had we denied them a scoring chance they got into the box i thought danilo probably should have sold out for that one and i think it might have been dagba or somebody who had to come in and like kick it back to novice it was it was a mess defensively at the end and it was just because nobody had any kind of legs left no legs and you know i i don't know what we're supposed to do about this i don't know do we chalk it up to the international break are we just actually out of shape um there were so many new faces that i hadn't actually seen play PSG look like a shell of themselves, um, and I'm I'm. Sad I wasn't, bu- yeah, it, it it is sad, and I wasn't even I wouldn't really buy in the you know what we did in the league, because mm-hmm. again, you know, I just I don't know the league doesn't hold too much weight for me anymore. But um, knowing that Pogba was not on the pitch for the first 60, 70 minutes, and it didn't seem like we could do anything, you know, I was very discouraged coming coming from that game yeah. it sounds like listening to everyone that we're all kind of in agreement that the team looked tired not set up right a lot of that can be put on the coach and then you think this is the second time at the Parc de France where Ali Gunnar Sochar has come in and just out tactic Thomas Tuchel so you could talk about Mbappe was tired he's a world-class athlete they all had five months off at the beginning of the year due to COVID I mean these guys should have been ready to go how much of this blame, Kose, we can go back to you. How much of this blame do you put on Tuchel, or do you put it mostly on the players? Um, I put all of the blame on Tuchel. Aww. All of the blame. All the blame. It's absolutely unacceptable. <laughs> and I know that there are many people who don't agree with this, um, but if you ask me, he should have been fired last year. He should have been fired last month he should have been fired last week yesterday today he should be fired is a damn shame that he isn't fired yet i understand the financial reasoning behind it i understand that he's done some things like we can never ever take from him that he did for the, for the final but i believe that his setup for the game against manchester is absolutely unacceptable he started three defensive midfielders Against a for team. a reason, you you knew that he that they were going to you knew that they were going to uh, fall back, and I I I was already asking questions before the game. I was they're gonna play with a back five. I'm pretty sure they're gonna play with a back five. Their injuries indicated they were that they were gonna play with a back five, and to break down that setup, you start three defensive midfielders, so. Yes. I, I think I think that you know obviously I'm not the coach of Paris Saint Germain, so he might know one or two more things in soccer than me. But um, I think that his setup was 
Like, I, I thought Rafinha should have started. Maybe I'm completely crazy for it, but I think he should have started. I think Herrera shouldn't even seen that pitch um, because his greatest attribute being defense was non-existent in this game. Um, Danilo was rushed in. Like, I just think that the decisions... How do you even start Kurzawa? Like, how is that the first thing that you think about? So... A lot of people... Yeah. I I I think that it was very hard for me because I always try to give Tuchel the benefit of the doubt. But this team, as as far as we got in the Champions League and as many many great things, including the the quadruple that that Tuchel brought to us last season, I think this is completely his fault. It's his responsibility. He's not owning up to it. I don't think, and uh, he should be fired. Well, that's pretty pretty succinct. I guess we can go to go around the horn here. Uh, Guillaume Tuchel should he be fired? No. Last week, last month, last night. No. No. no? no okay. No, no, no. What's your point no, of view? I, I Where do you assess the blame? Um, I generally agree with Kose, but this time I, I, I really don't. Um, he knows how Manchester plays. It's no rocket science. They have that very tonic midfield. They're going to play hard on counter attack. They're going to attract us up front. In, in, intercept the ball and they have super fast players up front and um, so Verratti is out uh, Marquinhos is out ouch okay so what do we do um, well we saw you had to um, move Gay out because Gay couldn't play and the reason why uh, Danilo and Hera suck is because Gay couldn't play. He was hopping on. I mean, like again, check his stats for the first half. He was barely playing in, uh, at all. He was he was nowhere where he, he was needed. It was terrible. So now you have two midfielders instead of three in a four-three-three. Good luck. You have you have uh, Mbappe and and Neymar not really defending anymore because they're fried. There's boulevards. So we saw it at halftime. Uh, King comes in. Uh, Mbappe goes on the wing, which, you know, created something. But, oh, my God, the boulevards we opened from them. They could have, have scored in the second half four goals. It was kind of a miracle. They didn't. Uh, because now we are, you know, it's an open shop. And they, 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 they did shop. Um, they were not very clinical. They could have scored a lot more goals than that. So here we are. Uh, Rafinha is interesting, but not not when your midfield is sinking like this. He's not, you know, it, he's not going to do the job. No, he did I come mean, on the in setup, the 80th minute, but a little bit yeah, too but, late. You know, then Kurzawa, yeah, okay. Yeah, we can talk about Baker, who's like, ooh, mm -hmm. he's becoming a very interesting, oh my God, I like Baker a lot. <laughs> The game he had against Dijon, both um, defensively and, and in attack and physically in the duels. Oh, he shreds. <laughs> oh, I like Baker a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, everything's not black because we lost against Man Manchester. We can we can go to Old Trafford and, and beat them. If if we're there physically, because we know, don't forget, don't let's not go from you know super high to super low. Yeah, What's we were missing super key players in in early in the season. It's a strange year. A lot of things have, have happened. Remember what happened to Tottenham after they reached the Champions League final. Ooh, they had a few problems, and the early, you know, the next season, early in the season, they were like catastrophic. It's like mentally, whew, you know, ask Kim Pembe how he was after winning mm -hmm. the World Cup. Yeah. And look look where he is now. So let's not, you know, let's not fire anyone yet. Uh because they has a point. Uh, you know, firing Tuchel, Tuchel is 15 million euros because you're firing his whole you know, entire staff. You can put any you can put club here if you want. It's not gonna change the fact that the players were not there mentally and completely fried physically. And he felt it because he's he's the coach, he goes to trainings and he, you know. And he felt like um, in the locker room, normally, you know, they pump up uh, music and Pembe brings this boombox. Yeah. Tuchel go, said they didn't do that. He said it was very no, quiet. It was quiet. Mm -hmm. 
Là, qu'il faut ça comme... <laughs> They were completely fried. So when you have the feeling as a coach, uh, it's a fried team, you're going to try to secure the midfield. Um, but also, I think he was surprised by how, you know, not, not here physically and mentally the, the team was. And he was surprised. And that was a terrible, terrible surprise to see Gay injured. Yeah. So, um, yeah, bad game, but let's not let's not freak out yet. <laughs> so don't blame Tuchel. Um, just to read off a couple stats, so it's kind of surprising. Manchester United had 39% of possession. Sh- total shots, both teams had 14. Uh, Manchester United had one more shot on goal. So they were happy to concede possession, but when Manchester United had the ball, played it in space, and they, they were getting shots off, so they were very dangerous. But, James, yeah. wrap up th- this section. I mean... Who who do you blame? Is it on the players? Should they be more prepared? You blame it on the, the manager for getting out coached once again against Manchester United, or is it a little bit of both? Uh, for me, in this particular game, um, I look towards most of the players. I'm, I'm trying to figure out why half the squad is injured. I'm trying to figure out why the people that were on the pitch were uninspired. Um, so for for that particular game, you know, I don't, I'm not looking at Tuchel too much, but I'm not a tactics guy either. So, um, tactics aside, the performance just overall, I think is, is more player based. Um, now I will say if you have a mind to fire him, um, you're, you're in a rough spot. Because if you were, I think there were two times in which you should have fired him, um, well before he got to the final, and like today. Because if you're going to fire him, you need to fire him early. Don't wait until you're halfway through the season or halfway through the UCL, and then you're trying to fire people and trying to find people to take over. If you're go, if I think like this week. Leonardo and the rest of the PSG front office needs to figure out, are we going to keep him or are we not going to keep him? Because if, if you don't want to keep him, you need to do it now. But if you decide that you're going to keep him, you need to, you got to do it after. I don't, I don't think there's any in between here. I think you're setting yourself up for failure. If you, you know, get out of the group stage, barely, let's say they barely get out of the group stage. They just get second and then they decide, all right, Going into the knockout rounds, we're gonna we're gonna get rid of Tuchel. I think that's worst case scenario. Yeah, it's hard to believe. You know, we're here. We were just in the Champions League final just a couple of months ago, and for me, I feel like the Tuchel situation is so much bigger than just this game. I mean, you got to look at his relationship with Leonardo. You know, they're trading barbs back and forth in the media. You know, the players come out in a in a big Champions League game like this, and they just look lethargic and uninspired. Maybe not having fans there contributed. You know, if you remember back against Dortmund, they had the fans outside lighting flares off, and you saw how much effort they put into that game. They just seemed to be going through the motions, so maybe that played a part. But for me, Tuchel's a fine coach. I think we could probably continue on and have some success with him. But given the fact that the team just doesn't seem to be reacting to whatever he's saying, I think you have to make a change just to like change the narrative and bring some life back into this team. I think you have to find the right manager, the one that all the players, especially Neymar and Mbappe, respect and want to play for. But if you could find that person, maybe it's Allegri, who knows, then I think you have to do it. Um, $15 million for this team, they could find that. You know, I know they're struggling financially, but they should be able to come up with that to you know get rid of Tuchel if they find the right manager. But I just think this team needs something. We, we didn't bring in that marquee signing that we were all hoping for. And so this team just seems to kind of have taken a step back from that Champions League final. And I just feel like we need some win for back now. in our sails, you know? For now. Yeah. Nah, we, we're going to be all right. Kosei's got something here. All right, go for it, Kosei. Um, so I just wanted to ask, I just wanted to finish with this. Um, yeah. What you said, Ed, well, how, how much was the possession, 60? Uh, I'm on ESPN FC, and they've got PSG with 61% and Manchester United with 39. Oh, okay, so we can say like 60, 40. 60% possession, and tell me how many of those passes were vertical passes. 
how many of those passers were not passing back to mm -hmm. the we couldn't even take corners we never looked in our never have i ever seen PSG look so undangerous from set pieces and who who do you think has all these players injured yes covid is definitely mm -hmm. an excuse um so is the international break i agree with Guillaume 100 that we do have a very very big a very big south american base which i love of course um but it that's does a, that's a that's a problem yeah it yeah. does come at a price Look at um, Maya, my God. Yes, it's terrible, it's terrible. But, oh, oh, oh. but uh, the the rotation policy is terrible. Tuchel's rotation policy, policy is absolutely pathetic. There is no... Uh, uh, Di Maria wasn't, wasn't uh, called up for the Argentina national team. He didn't play, so he could have been perfect. Why did he play Mbappe the game before? Why did he play Mbappe the game before? Nobody... Nobody important that was playing the Manchester United game should have played the game against uh, Nim, and 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 um, and uh, use. I mean, like I said, he must know more football than me. But use something attacking. You have Dragster in the bench. You have Rafael in the bench. You have to use something that is going to break that line down because it was. I agree that that um, Ghana was terrible, but it was just sideways passing between all of them. The whole game, nothing. It was nobody able to come up with anything. Just give it to Neymar and have him run into a wall five times in ten minutes, and it did not work. It clearly did not work. You have to have something else, yeah. something, another attacking spark that's gonna. If you have a team that that's falling back, you have to have something that's going to to make that defense uncomfortable, make it move around. Yeah, absolutely agree. And there was that stat, I don't have it pulled up here, but something about Mbappe hadn't scored in the Champions League, you know, since last December. You know, this team was really struggling scoring goals. And when you've got Mbappe and Neymar, that just shouldn't be the case. I mean, most managers would be like chomping at the bit to, to manage a team with two of the top five best players in the world, best attacking players in the world. And, you know, we're, we're relying on an own goal against Manchester United. It's like, what is going on here? At some point, you do have to ask the manager, like, what is going on? I know they're tired, but if they're out there, you know, why there, are there are solutions. There are solutions. I, I like, um, I was a bit um, neutral when Raphael, we're going to call him Raphael because, you know, the, his brother's better and plays for, uh, for Bayern Munich. But, um, He's interesting. There's uh, he brings something. He's like an eight because you know it's it's from the Barca philosophy. So they they defend. They it's not it's not very physical and and won't have a huge impact. But he he falls back. Um, he pulls back and defends. Uh, and there's something between him and Neymar, in the, you know supplying all main issue and and. Manchester United did the same thing Bayern did and the same thing Lyon does. It's like to disrupt the supply to uh, our players up front. So Neymar can't do it all. I mean, sometimes he can, but rarely at that level. Um, and, and they did disrupt that very easily because, well, there was no, no solutions uh, with the midfield we had. And so if you put uh, um, Raphael there, there's a risk that we get completely overwhelmed, um, you know, in midfield because now we have no defense or no defensive midfield. But then, you know, it's a hurrah football, which we kind of had actually um, the last 10, 15 minutes was, were absurd. Just from one goal to the other, you know. Um, and that's, no coach is going to go with that. They don't, you know, they First thing you want is your your defensive structure to hold because you know you're gonna lose the game. So he didn't do that. He didn't he didn't really go for it and say fuck it. I'm gonna <laughs> put my offensive players and Kesera Sera, um, and we're kind of mad because we think you know maybe that would have worked. Yeah, no. It wouldn't have worked. <laughs> it wouldn't have worked. But let's again. Let's not freak out too much. Um, it was a interesting transfer window. Mm -hmm. There's good signs. I mean, um, we talk about Kurzawa sucking. He had a very good game against Dijon, guys. He had a good game. Interesting defensively. 
I mean, it, it, it was like an asset, which is rare. Baker is, is doing okay. I knew Diallo would give a penalty against Manchester United. It's so like he does that. But then he had some incredible, in, in the second half, the reason why we didn't, we didn't get scored two or three goals was Diallo suddenly really doing something. And Diallo is almost like a new, new transfer. He's, he's got potential. He's, he can be also interesting as a left back. I know I'm not talking about like world-class players. We know who they are and, you know, and Verratti and Marquinhos missing was like catastrophic for this. Remember where, Ki where Kipembe is, um, Kipembe Marquinhos. We saw Danilo uh, against Dijon as a central defender. Okay, it's Dijon, but he can do that. The team was like uh, hit a wall physically and, you know, physically and mentally. It's body and mind. Let, let, let's not freak out yet. Uh, they're going to be back. We have more depth. Mm -hmm. Kose is going gonna to be happy because we, we're going to see some more rotation. Even if Draxler was coming back at a really interesting level. God damn it. <laughs> really interesting level like the Draxler we like. Like smarter. Like, um, fig, like his football IQ is suddenly much higher. And what happens? He gets injured. Here we go. God damn it. Oh my God. So, yeah. you know, anyway, but there's, there's some positive yeah. and um, let, let, let's be a bit patient. And, and I'm sorry, I know we want to move on, but yeah. I just want to um, tell me, Guillaume, why, do, why, are we, why aren't we seeing more Reese? Hmm? More Reese. That's what, I, that's what I need to see on the field right now. Who? Kai's, Kai's Reese. Oh, uh, we are, but he's not going to come in in a Champions League game. Well, I mean, that's the question that I wanted to ask. Why aren't we seeing some of these young guys? I mean, Manchester United Champions came in League. here with a bunch of 12-year-olds and beat us. If right. the other guys aren't getting it done, if they're too tired, put in Ruiz. <laughs> put in, you know, <laughs> some of these young kids. Oh, my God. Oh, no, it's against that. <laughs> Look at Manchester oh. City starting lineup. Look at Manchester City starting lineup for the Champions League. They started, I swear to God, they started a 17-year-old. I swear to God. I'm with you. I'm with I'm you. If the, if the, if with a bunch of twelve-year-olds, that's crazy. <laughs> no, we had one, a seventeen-year-old who could who could start and did okay in the Champions League, and we tried everything to hold on to him, and he went to Bayern Munich. Um, these guys are rare. We have a phenomenal, phenomenal um, player, seventeen-year-old, who's uh, six-five, I think, or six-six. I forgot. I can't pronounce his name. He's got the craziest name and uh we is you know it's interesting maybe we, we're going to see a bit more of him but they don't want to fry them i mean you put ruiz against uh Mac mctominay uh, he's gonna shred him like for the confidence for like you know so we we see them fadiga uh, fadiga is interesting too yeah there's some talent but it's, it's, you know, before they, they feel confident to express it, it takes a special player. It takes really a special, special player to come in at that age in such a team and, and, and do, do something. Uh, not every player is Camavinga. I mean, this guy, 17-year-old, uh, I don't know if you saw what he did with the French national team, the goal he scored at 17. Physically, they're there. Technically, they're there. It's it's mentally, guys. I mean, it's like okay, I'm 17, and I come in, and there's Mbappe, there's Neymar, there's Di Maria. Uh, hey, hey, guys, what up? And look at me, hoop. No, that's not how it works. That's well, not, the pressure. Yeah. I mean, imagine, imagine, imagine. Well, there's so no fans in the stadium. Them. The pressure's off. You're at home. Maybe that's an opportunity. It's, hey, you're still on TV, though. You still gotta go in public afterwards. <laughs> the other need, throw them into the deep end. Throw them into the deep end. They're well, gonna swim. Even if you don't play them in the Champions League, that's all the more reason that they should be playing in these league on games. Give, you know, Idrissa Gay time to recover and Herrera. Give them time to recover and bring in some of these other young players to play Dijon. They should. They should put in league on games. They should put an under twenty three. Like, they have to show in training that they're there. That's it. We don't know what's happening. I would love PSG Talk to have a guy with a press pass going to Candeloge. He would tell us. That's when you smell. You see it. It's like, okay, this guy, you know, 
I don't know, like uh, Herrera in midfield comes with the ball and suddenly you see that 17-year-old going boom on Herrera, you know, folding him in half, getting the ball and, and doing something. That's a sign. Like, okay. When you see that, I mean, I'm assuming, but when you see that, it's like, okay, you really want it. You're there physically, you're there mentally, I'm going to give you a chance. When you don't know as a coach and you look at the player, it's like, okay, well, you don't take the risk. It's the Champions League. Yeah, against Dijon, sure. And yeah. and he did. He did. This conversation is making Miss Kawasi. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was one of those special players. That could... Is he playing for Bayern Munich? Have no. you seen him play? I haven't seen him. Not even, he didn't even make the squad, the Champions League squad. He's on the side of a milk carton. He's gone missing. No one knows where he is. He could go. be playing... He could be started went, playing major minutes. I went, I went to Bayern Munich because I wanted to play. Okay. Yeah. Good luck Great. with that. Well, Thank Guillaume, you, you mentioned a couple uh, lineup changes for that the game against Dijon, and so I, I kind of wanted to transition the conversation to that match. Um, you know, you had Marquinhos in in the midfield. Um, you had I'm just pulling up the lineup now. You had um, Pereira. Yeah, I mean, it was an odd starting eleven. Mm-hmm. You know, and yep. you had some injuries, and you know, you had to yellow, shuffle things around. Yellow Pereira, central defense. Yeah, so I've got it pulled up here. You know, you Rico had Rico Baker Dagba. Yeah, talk about Kose. You wanted some, t- um, you know, rotation. <laughs> this is yeah, rota- up front. That's some rotation for you. But was it the right kind of rotation? Because he had players all out of position. So. Um, Kose, do you want to take this one? And then James will go to you. But just talk about the lineup. Like, is this Tuchel trying to get fired? Um, I mean, I think that usually when it comes to league games, um, I always give Tuchel the benefit of the doubt. You know? And I very, very often do not agree with his lineups. But, um, you know, I give him the benefit of the doubt. And this is one of the lineups where even though I didn't necessarily agree exactly about what he was doing, um, I did understand or I did respect the the trying. You know, like Guillaume said, here you, we, we can see your rotation here. I, yeah, sure. I mean, I want to see more. I think this is pretty rotated, so I'll, I'll, I'm happy. I'll take it. Um, but I think that... Um, I mean, I respect I respect him trying to do something different. I respect I understand why he is so obsessed with Marquinhos in midfield because he's obsessed with Marquinhos in midfield, and I think I understand why I, that is because we don't have a player. If you really think about it, we do not have a player that has that same balance of defensive and offensive capabilities in just a single player that can play in the midfield. We do, I don't think we have that in 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 our midfield. Um, and so that's why he likes to have him there because you might have players that are better with the ball but they're not nearly as defensive and as good defensively as he is Um, so seeing Pereira at the back is kind of weird again I was he he could do it against Dijon yeah he wasn't he wasn't too bad so um, I like I said I respect the change I like to see Draxler in there from the beginning I like to see Rafinha in from the beginning we have to manage minutes we have to manage minutes um, I don't think Mbappe should have gone in. I don't think Herrera should have gone in. But, you know, um, maybe he wanted to try something for the week. I personally enjoy weird lineups. Like, if you ask, and that's just my personal preference. Like, if you ask me about our first lineup ever this season against Longs, I was like, yes, this is exactly a type of lineup that I want to see in league. Like, I want to see our academy players starting. I want to see our, you know, I always, I always... Um, you know, get angry at the administration because they say, why do we have 25 goalkeepers? Like, why do we have 25 goal- goalkeepers? Like, who's going to who's gonna be the goalie? Like, I'm actually on the depth chart. I'm, I'm the 26th goalkeeper. Yeah, so, <laughs> so um, I like to see weird lineups that um, I always think that high rotation, coaches that, that offer high rotation create a whole squad. They don't have 11 players that play, but they have a whole squad that plays. And maybe right now is not the best time to say this, but throughout one of the best teams in history, which is Zinedine Zidane's Real Madrid, he was known for doing fantastic rotation. And yes, did he keep his his base and his starting 11 in important games? He did, but he rotated massively 
um, with players that he trusted throughout um, league games and cup games, and that's what I like to do. So I, 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 I think this is a weird lineup, yes, but I, I agree. I like the, 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 you know, the adventure, and I like trying something else, and I like other players getting minutes and us managing minutes for the players who play the most. Thanks. James, I wanted to ask you, um, Mbappe did not start this game, but he did come in in the 72nd minute. You know, we just got done talking about how Mbappe looked tired. He played a lot of games with France. He just looked tired. Why are you bringing, why is Tuchel bringing him in for any amount um, of time in a, a game against Dijon, which at last look uh, was last place in Ligue 1? Well, why? I mean, he did, Mbappe did score. Um, he got I mean, a brace. You know why? <laughs> Is because there's going to be hell to pay if Mbappe doesn't play in a game. And it's not going to be from, from anybody above. It's going to be from Mbappe himself. That's why he went in the game. No, he, he, he put it in because Keane, you know, had probably not much more a juice. Um, had scored a brace, which, which was great. And uh, he was fried. And uh, Mbappe always wants to play. And this guy... Doesn't need uh, a big break. Physically, he's a monster. We all know that. Also, he's super freaking young. So, you know, mm-hmm. he doesn't need much to get back, uh, you know, recharge your batteries. But is this and a case always, of the player... He always wants to play. He always wants to play. But that. is this a case of the players telling Tuchel what to do? Like, Bobby shouldn't be able to tell bit. Tuchel, I want to play. Tuchel should tell him, this is Dijon. Chill out. You need to rest. But the fact that he brought him in because he's, you know, scared of... Mbappe and what he'll do. And so what I said, he brought him in because Keane needed a break. You know, uh, Keane uh, physically, uh, especially that type of player, mm-hmm. um, he doesn't have much uh, preparation. He's out of shape. He needs, and then, you know, 10 minutes for Mbappe. It's a good compromise. A compromise. Two goals yeah. for Mbappe. Good, uh, you know, who's... Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> he's got to step up his game in the Champions League again. You know, that's going to be... Uh, the hopefully they know it. He's, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll ask this question to everyone. Um, Keen scored the brace, you know, opening up the scoring two goals against Dijon. I really like this this loan. Um, there's been some reports that maybe PSG could keep him for some kind of fee at the end. Um, I really like him a lot. I like it too. What, what do you think this means for Icardi? And do you think Keane can work himself into a, like a regular rotation for big Champions League games? Hopefully we can get to the knockout stage. But I'm really, really high on Keane. I'm just curious if you guys share my optimism. Um, whoever wants to take it, just jump in. I take it. Okay, go for it. <laughs> I'm trying to get the light. My stupid tomorrow. Um, we don't have a player like him. You know, it's the typical super modern uh, forward they're not really nine. They're not really 11. They're all of that because physically, they're freaking monsters. Physically keen. It's simple. He gets the ball. Boom, he goes in. 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 He drags. He drags. He drags. He will not stop. He's relentless. He can't, he's a decent dribbler. He's a good shooter. He's a, he's a nightmare for defense. We don't have that. We don't have this uh, ultra, well, Mbappe... In a way, it's that, but not as physical. Keen looks almost like a uh, you know American football player in, in many ways. Like, wow. So he's great, and he's super young. So the, his, his status is like you know is like the mascot, right? And now he plays with Neymar, Mbappe, and Di Maria. He's not gonna yell if he doesn't start. He's great. So. Um, I think he fits really well in, in the team and he's very, very different um, from Icardi, very different type of player. Icardi is a pure nine. He's a, as the French call it, the, 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 the fox of the square. The, the, you know, he's like, he's the killer. Um, Dean is not a killer. He's not, he's, he's not as clinical and never will be. But he's very interesting. I, I, I agree with you. Uh, and it's, it's, we should, yeah, if we can keep him, we should. Yeah, I just looked it up. He's six foot one sixty. Um, I'm not sure what position he would play on uh, American football. Maybe a center or a cornerback or something like that. At one sixty, he ain't playing nothing. <laughs> Maybe he can. He could be the kicker. All right. But, so he's, he's no football. <laughs> he needs to put some weight on. He's, all his weight is in his thighs. That's right. And he goes. He's like okay. He's no joke. 
He's he, no joke. Yeah, he came but with a great reputation. So. I, I could see an issue with Icardi if he starts taking some of his minutes. You know, Icardi just got rid of Cavani, and now he's thinking, oh, I can get all these minutes now. And then here comes Keane, and he scores two goals. And hopefully, we don't have it. Doesn't get ugly between those two. And you know. he was missing against Manchester United. I can tell you that. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Jose um, or James, anything on Keane? You guys just as high on him as uh, Guillaume and I are? I am. I mean, I think yeah. he, he fits a, a niche that, uh, like you said, we, we don't have. Um, we need another person that we can put in at the quote unquote nine role that isn't a that isn't just a poacher. Um, that can move around a little bit. So, yeah, I, I think if we have the bandwidth and the funds to do it and it's not going to break the bank, then we should. Very good. Well, we're coming up on time, so I want to make sure we talk about uh, the game on Wednesday, I guess, in Istanbul, Basak Sashir. I, I worked really hard on <laughs> trying to pronounce Basak, Basak, Basak that. Basak Sashir, yeah. yeah Thank you. Right. Thank you, Guillaume. Um, this this is a must win, right? I mean, you you go down to Manchester United, you lose. This is a tough game, you know. You're traveling to Turkey. I mean, this this isn't the big team in the Turkish league, um, no. but PSG are more than capable of fucking this up. So, um, Guillaume, obviously a must win. What yeah, talk no. to me about what you think the lineup will be, the mentality? Are we going to see this team play 120 percent? You know, give yes. that much effort. I mean, talk talk to me what your expectations are for this game, and maybe if you want to predict the result. Um, so the team is not going to be there 100% uh, physically, but mentally they will. Uh, Marquinhos is going to be back. Verity, I don't know what's what's the, what's the deal with Verity. Um, I don't think he's going to be able to be back for this one. Oh God, I don't okay. think. Okay, Draxler is injured too. Um, Okay, we have we have more depth. I'm not worried. We'll get we'll get it. We'll we'll get we'll get the job done. It may not be a phenomenal game, but yeah. Um, yeah, sorry I, sorry to cut in. I just pulled it up. It looks like Lakeith reported that he would be out for three weeks, and that was about a week ago. So yeah, I don't expect to see Verratti for this one. Uh, okay. <laughs> Do we have oh, any right. updates on Paredes? Uh, so oh I, yeah, I, I, I oh, and Paredes is missing too, guys. My yeah, I, I pulled up. Um, the UEFA's roster mm -hmm. right now on their website just to see, you know, kind of like the injury report or who they're listing as injured. And they've got Carrera or Kerr, sorry, Kerr, Verratti, Paredes, Gay, um, and Draxler as injured with Acardi listed as doubtful. So if they do know what they're talking about, we still have um, an entire lineup that is hurt. <laughs> yeah, despite that, we should we should win this game. I, I've, I've, there's no way we do two games like this. No way. No. I mean, let, I mean, worst case scenario. Let's just if it happens and we somehow lose or get a draw, it, I, you got to fire Tuchel at that point. Even if Guillaume, if, if you're <laughs> everything you said, I mean, you can't lose to Manchester United and get a draw or lose to Istanbul. However, you say the last part of their team name, like you just can't. Yeah. Fire to fire him and see how it goes. And you know, oh yeah, it's gone. Who? It's gonna be great. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna be great. Because then, then you're facing. You got to go to Manchester, and then you've got two games against Leipzig, which is no easy task. I mean, they were in the what semifinals of the Champions yeah, we League. Them and completely destroyed them. But that was with a full team, and oh, we were real. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I have a few things to say. Here. Okay, go for it. <laughs> um, this is. Right now, this is the most important game of the season so far. The game that we're going to play on Wednesday. Because if we do not win this game, then we can potentially be staring at the Europa League in the face. Because... And win it. Yay! <laughs> well, but do we do we have Neymar and Mbappe in our roster for the Europa League? No. <laughs> they quit. They quit. They buy by the, the, the contracts. They wouldn't even celebrate it. They would just like kind of like with the runners up medal. They were like, "What is this?" You know. <laughs> so um, this is this is the most important game of the season so far because Leipzig is not gonna fail against Istanbul 
And United, it might be more in their interests, or not in their interests, but in their way that they usually do things, is beating PSG at the Parc de France and then going to lose against the Turkish team. That is a possibility, but I don't think any of the other two teams are going to mis make a mistake. Um, and so we cannot either. So this has to be a win game, absolutely. Um, and I hope to see... I think that, that we're going to be facing a team that is similar to what Manchester United proposed to us in the Parc de France. And I think it's going to be very hard for us because last time we went to Turkey, it was really hard. And we came out, we, we came out only with a 1-0 one, with one zero victory mm -hmm. against Galatasaray. Um, so they're, they're a better team, but I think it's going to be a really tough game. Um, and I hope to see a completely different team and a completely different mentality um, because this is a, a massive, a massive game. Um, and, you know, I agree that, that, um, that just firing the coach right now might not be in our immediate best interest, but, you know, maybe we could get, um, you know, Guillaume to coach them and then that would be. Oh, job. I wouldn't say no. <laughs> yeah, I would not say no. I would, not I would approve no. that. So Istanbul, the team PSG are playing are in 11th place in the uh, Turkish league. So not exactly lighting it up, but they're going to be at home. They've got nothing to lose. They can get organized and sit back. And as we've sure. seen, Tuchel has no offensive tactical ability whatsoever. And so he's not going to be able to no, break it down. And he's just going to like get the ball to Mbappe on the wing and hopefully no, something no. happens. No, 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 no. <laughs> Have, no, no, no. We're going to be just fine. Uh, even with a B team, we're going to be fine. Well, Ed we is, have Ed too many. Confusing. We have too many talents in that team to like do you know too many bad performances one after the other. At one point, Sarabia, Sarabia started you know showing signs that like he's, he's going. He showed uh, signs of uh, life uh, against Dijon. Of, of life, <laughs> maybe Draxler's injury is nothing, and he'll be back at that level. Um, Keen, Keen's brace was super important for him. He's got the. He's good enough for that game. Uh, you know, we have we have depth, a lot more depth. And remember who are, I mean, the, the list of injured players is incredible. And normally, that's when we play with the 15 and 17-year-old. Remember a season and a half ago, the, the early season, we played with, like, who is this guy? Even you go on Wiki, PSG Academy, he's not even listed there, and he plays... And then so, we saw that's when we saw Kwasi against Galatasaray. I think he became the youngest PSG player to start yeah. for them, right? Oh, uh, so that player I was um, trying to remember his name. He's not 17. He's 15 years old. Okay. He's 6'5. His name is El Shaddai Bichabu. Bichabu. He's a central defender, but in midfield. If you if you thought Kwasi was impressive. <laughs> Now, 6'5", he could play basketball. We were talking about American football earlier. He's, he's something else. Shoot. And hopefully you can hold on to that guy because yeah. we need a player like this. Anyway. anyway. So, no, we'll, we'll be fine. Uh, we'll be J fine. James, what are you thinking about this game? You were trying to cut in there for a second. Do you want to follow up on anything that's been said? Oh, well, yeah. I was going to say, you know, you you were talking about uh, uh, Tuchel's... Uh, offensive prowess and i was going to say you were probably confusing him with jeremy pruitt but um <laughs> game again has no idea what we're talking about <laughs> i'm sure it's very funny no no it's it's college football but yeah go ahead no. yeah yeah ed, ed and i's team have uh what used to be a rivalry which is now more of a misunderstanding it's more like uh psg marseille yeah like when was the last time marseille ever won anything and you're just wondering like is it ever going to be competitive again mm -hmm. right um, but the PSG should not drop any points against this team. I, I'm kind of with game here. I don't really care who's injured, but I might be more on Kose's side if they do find a way to botch this. Oh yeah. That'd be a problem. If they lose, like I, I might, I might have to swing by Kose's place and grab me a pitchfork and, and a torch. <laughs> <laughs> and and well, it's just to, better be lucky be thankful that we can't leave the united states right now to go protest <laughs> and call for his firing you just better be lucky well you said if if it happens so let's just go around the horn right here real quick 
Give me a score prediction. Let's get you guys on the record. I mean, are PSG going to screw this up? Or are they going to find a way to make it happen? James, you want to kick us off here? Oh, I got to go first? Go first. Yeah, give me a prediction for this game. Um, I'm going to go... I'll go 2 nil PSG. Nice. Gia? We've got a 2 nil. What do you think? Uh, so I, I, I was going for 2 two nil, but now I can't because it's taken. So I'm going to say 3-0. 3-0. 3-0. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to say 3-0. Not an easy game, but 3-0. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I'm i going to go with the most conservative approach. I think it's going to be really hard. Um, so we might just end up having the same scoreline we had last time we went over to Turkey. So I think we PSG gets it 1-0. 1-0. I'm going to go. I'm going to be a Debbie Downer. I'm going to go 1-1 with PSG scoring an own goal. Because I don't, I don't think Istanbul, even though our defense is kind of crap, I don't see them. Jello. Uh, Jello yeah, I, I could see maybe like a penalty. <laughs> Yeah. PSG are going to gift the, them a goal. Did you, just, uh, did you guys see that stat that PSG has considered the most amount of penalties since the Qatar takeover? Yeah. Since the, since the Qatar takeover in the yeah. Champions League or any other team? Yep. And they've only been awarded like half that. It was like they've only been awarded seven and they've given up like 18, if I remember correctly. Not um, that I have in mind too, so they must be correct. <laughs> yeah. So, real, I mean, let, let we can end on that. I mean, conspiracy or is this bad luck it seems unlikely that that would be the case if everything's fair i mean it seems like psg definitely are on the wrong side of a lot of calls i mean anything to read into that statistic yeah uh there i think there's a there's a couple things and conspiracy is not one of them because conspiracy is like when it happens a couple times in certain key situations but if you're giving up 18 and nobody else has given up 18, that means the first thing I want to know is, all right, well, who, what, give me the individual that is responsible for most of these. And then it's like, all right, is this person always out of position? Is he just a physical person? He likes to use his hands a lot. Like what is, so I think there is something to read into it. I'm just not sure what it is. Cause if you tell me like, Hey, 12 of them are all on the same dude, then I'm like, all right, we maybe maybe this isn't the guy to have in high pressure situations. If he's, yeah. it's, it's I guess it's kind of like uh, Nicholas Sule from uh, from Bayern. It's mm-hmm. like if anybody's gonna give up an own goal for Bayern, it's gonna be him. He's the one that's always doing it. So I, I would like to see more information on the on the eighteen penalties, but. I'm not going to lean into conspiracy if it's that many penalties that we're giving up. It just seems like PSG never get the benefit of the doubt. I mean, that penalty that Diallo got called for against Manchester United. Oh, yeah, United, that one was soft. Barely touched him. And then here's Mbappe just getting flung off the ball. And they're like, oh, play on, get up, you know? And it's just something's going on there. Yeah, for me, the issue is, first of all, what you're saying Ed, is the inconsistency of the calls. That is really what bothers me because that have always been the case with Kim Pembe's handball. Um, I remember when Lo Celso committed a penalty on Tony Cruz on the Bernabeu, and he was offsides. So Tony Cruz was offsides, and then they 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 called the penalty on Lo Celso, who fouled him while he was offsides. So we know we know how they treat us, you know, like we know we we expect it already. But I also think that this is a, t- a sign of a team that doesn't know how to defend. And I say this. Being it that our defensive was, I think, the best defense in the Champions League last season. Barely got any any goals, especially in the group stage, at least. A team that doesn't know how to defend and, and had a absolutely master defensive game against Bayern Munich in yeah. the final. But, I mean, but, uh, but look where, incredible. Look, yeah. what Bayern, look what Bayern did to Atletico Madrid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I understand. Atletico so- Madrid, 4-0. I, bro, I, I, Guillaume, that so is we the can, fact. but uh, yeah, you have a point. You have a point. But we, 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 we know we're when, not Bayern Munich. We're not Manchester United. Even if Manchester as a team has been terrible, as a club, they eons away. Ask, ask Arsenal fans. They will tell you the same thing. They call penalties on us all the time. Because we're not, you know, we're not there. It's not Real Madrid. It's not Manchester United. It's not Barcelona. It's not Bayern Munich. It's not Juventus. Uh, it's Paris Saint-Germain, it's Arsenal, it's Manchester City. Yes. I'm and sure C- City fans will, will tell you the same thing. It's, uh, so it, there's a lot of factors coming into that 
I it's understand. incredibly frustrating. The only solution is. is going to be robot referees. It's the only way to get this bias out of here. I don't and, know. And, no, and look how and look how far the fans got us. When we were good, look how far it got us. But this season we have been absolutely terrible in defense. Uh, I think we have been, yeah, against league on clubs we can do what we do. But every time we faced a team with half an ounce of talent. Our midfield looks like they're skating on ice, and if you saw the 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 game against Manchester United, then for me Diallo was man of the match, and and Rashford had like five times that he saw Keylor Navas in the eye, and he was like, "Oh, I'm about to shoot right now," and then some miracle happened, and we didn't concede. So I think that our defensive solidity has to be our number one concern at this point. Sure, of course, of course. That game oh, my was, battery is at five percent, so I was, may shut down. Anything. Yeah, well, no, that that's good uh, topic to end it on. Some good spirited debate there. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, as we mentioned, Marquinhos is, is going to be back in midfield. I, I smell mm-hmm. Danilo in central defense. Uh, that's why he was test, tested there. It's great. It's a, He's a, he's a tough, tall six. He'd be mm-hmm. great in central defense. He's done it before. Marquinhos is going to back. He's going to be back in midfield, and suddenly, oh my, my God, miracle! <laughs> Stability. Yeah. Uh, you know, everything's going to yeah. be. Better. I don't like seeing Marquinhos in, in midfield only because I know he doesn't want to be there. Sure, but for now, it's a good solution. The team needs to that glue back and that. So, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. We'll be all right. Captain Marquinhos. So a pivotal week. I mean, we talked about the game on Wednesday. Then we uh, we've got Nantes on Saturday, and then a trip to Leipzig on November fourth. So I mean, yep. those three yep. games yep. could really define this first quarter part of the season. Could determine whether Tuchel keeps his job. Um, we didn't get to these topics, but you know, there's talks of you know a possible Neymar contract extension. There's been reports that Mbappe's uh, reps met with Leonardo. So if things keep going down the toilet, I can't imagine those guys are going to want to stick around long term. So we've got to turn this thing around. So Interesting season. Yeah. Very interesting. All right. Well, uh, James, let everyone know how they can find you on Twitter. We'll, we'll sign off here. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Teague13. Fantastic. And Guillaume, how can people find you? At Off The Door 1. Great. Off uh, The Door 1. And Kose? Um, and then you all guys can all find me at at Cose Espinosa. Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. How about you, Ed? How about oh, you? at How PSG we... Talk. You can always find me at PSG Talk. <laughs> visit the website. Visit all of our stuff. Uh, download, rate our podcasts, all that good stuff. Um, all right. We'll catch you guys next time. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Thanks.